Thank you so much for being here. And I've started recording, Danielle, thanks. Gotcha, yeah, so we've, we've started recording class and this uh, will be available for replay. So um, that uh, reminds me to mention that, um, so this is a one hour class and we're gonna be doing our um, bead embroidery project. And it's a, um, a really great introduction to bead embroidery because it covers the two main techniques that most people use to do an embroidery stitch on felt or fabric. And um, then we're gonna do a brick stitch border around it. So you'll have all three stitches um, in, your, in your toolbox to be able to create any design that you'd like. Um, but it's, it's an action packed class. So I have samples made ahead. So we're gonna do each step and then I'll have like a fast forward. You repeat the step, you know, so many times and here's how it looks when you finish that row. And so we're gonna be doing a lot of that. So it will be, um, more challenging to work along in real time, but definitely you can use the replay where you can pause it and, and see the stitches again. Um, and so um, what our class has for um, supplies, I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys down on the mat. And so the, um, really the main thing you're gonna need are seed beads in any color that you'd like. And then something to stitch around. This design does use um, something to stitch around. And it's not a must that you have a center. Lots of really beautiful bead embroidery is done without a center. But I felt for beginning level class, it's a really great thing because it speeds up um, creating a circle and getting to try that tacking stitch. So when I was at Michael's, I was walking around and trying to find well, what would work and what would be fast. Because you know I wanted something kind of small. And I got the idea to do an eye when I found these little sticky gems and they're really sticky and you can glue them if you want with some gem tack or something, but they stuck to the felt no problem. And I haven't used glue myself in my own designs. And they've been pretty, pretty durable. So that's what, these are what I'm using today just for our demo. But then um, they have lots of them. There's like a whole wall. These were like little druzies. I found these when I was walking around. So I might experiment with some pear shapes and you see the glue on the back. Oh. Just a really fun, nice shortcut skips you um, one of the gluing steps if you wanted to do kind of a stitch around a cab style design. All right, so there's, there's those. And so stitching on, I'm using some stiffened felt. And I found this just in the, on the felt wall. And it's a Creatology. I believe it comes in other colors. I was only able to find this one at my local, but I think there's at least like a red and maybe even a brown one. And so then after that, we'll do our stitching on that. Then I have just a regular, not a stiffened felt, just like a, you know, a, a fuzzier one um, that I'm gonna use for the backing. And so um, what else? We're gonna need needles and threads. So these are some size 12 beading needles. I went with 12 because it's just a little easier to get the thinner needle through the many layers that you'll end up stitching through. So it's it's okay to use a 10. You just might have an easier time with a 12. And for thread, I'm gonna be using wildfire. And in my samples on the white felt, I was using white thread. But today for class, I'm gonna use a contrasting color so you can see everything a little bit better. Um, another cool thing to have around is like a fabric pen. You could also just use a regular pencil. Pencil works totally fine. And we only need this at one spot. And it's when we're just gonna practice drawing a free form, you know, outline and stitching on it. And then some scissors. Um, I'm gonna use uh, some pretty sharp fabric scissors. And of course you wanna be super careful with these. We only need them for just a short little, you know, uh, trace around the design. And I think that's everything. Um, hopefully, oh, I forgot one thing, um, some glue. So this is just felt glue. And I like it because it's, it's instant grab. You do want to let it dry before, um, you know, you wear a piece like this. But if you do your glue step and then you wanted to do your brick stitch, it's if you keep the glue kind of toward the center, you can get away with stitching without letting it completely dry first. It also dries really fast anyway. So, but any kind of fabric glue would work. And yes, I think that was the that was the last one. And so for um, again, any colors you like. But what I'm using today is a light blue, silver lined light blue in 10. That's gonna go around 
around the iris that I am using the, for a sticky gem to create. Then I'm going to fill in, well, sorry, next we'll go to the gold. This is a size 10, size 10 O, vintage gold that just kind of tracing a little line here around, filling it in with a white pearl. And then last but not least, the edging. The edging's done with some size eight seed beads. That's this here. It's cool to size up. You can get away with doing a six here if you want. If you have a color you love in size six, that'll work as well. Okay, and so let's dive in. I'm gonna grab that felt that I had, starting with the stiffened stuff. And um, in the handout, it says to cut three and a half by three and a half inch square. And I'm honestly just eyeballing that. Literally, <laughs> literally eyeballing that. Um, I promise no more pun. <laughs> but so yeah, I'm just gonna go, um, you know, just kind of like around it. It doesn't have to be exact because this is a pretty small design. If you were doing something bigger, of course, you'd wanna maybe measure it out a little bit. But I find this felt goes a long way. I've made all my samples with just, with just this one square. There we go. Okay, now I'm gonna get my thread. And again, I'm using the, um, I'm gonna use the black wildfire so it's easier to see. So as far as how much to cut, um, you don't need to cut a lot of this thread. It's easy to add thread. It's incredibly easy to add. So if you wanna just work with a link that's comfortable for you, that's what I would recommend doing. I'm just gonna trim that. And to thread my size 12 beading needle, I'm gonna to wanna to flatten this end. So these are just some pliers that I had around. I'm using those to flatten the end of my thread. And if you are using, um, you know, the wildfire with me, that trick's really handy. If you're using another kind of size D thread, like a like a Nymo or um, you know any other kind of beading thread, you may or may not need to do that little threading trick. All right. And so once you've got it threaded through, just pull down maybe a few inches and just fold it over. I'm working this on a single strand. And that's just, you know, that's my style for it. But um, I find it's easier just to, from a perspective of getting tangles, I find it a lot easier to work with single strand than with doubled. Um, a lot of folks do do doubled though. So um, I'm not saying don't do doubled. It's just, this is the way I like to, to do my stitching. And so at the end here, we don't need much of a tail, um, but I'm gonna tie a, a pretty thick knot here. And the way I do my knots, as I go through once, and then I go through it one more time and pull that down. And that's usually thick enough to not come through my felt. And we'll probably trim that at the end. And then um, switching over to grab one of these little stickies. I'm just gonna put that right in the center. And again, if this was something you were using that didn't have adhesive on it already, you could glue it. You'd want to let it dry for a little bit before doing the, the stitching step. But I found that these sticky gems are just, they're just a nice little shortcut. Um, and then also, um, if you have a button or a bead that you really like, um, you can use alternatives and you can stitch them down first. So there's just lots of ways to get started here. Definitely, I would say try all your ideas. And so what I've done here is I brought the needle up from the back along the side of my sticky gem. And I'm just gonna pull it all the way through. And there's my knot. And so this tail here, I'll trim that later. I might trim it um, kind of towards the end of our, cause I might like to catch it a little bit as we stitch around just for some extra security, but we're gonna, gonna end up trimming it short <clears throat> and then we're gonna end up gluing some backing onto it. So don't sweat the tail, just uh, you know, let that be there. And again, I'm starting with my blue, blue seed beads. All right, and so if you're using the same size that um, I'm using, the uh, these sticky gems here, which I think are about 
I don't see a dimension on it. To me, they look about eight millimeter. 18 size 10 o seed beads was the, the number that worked for me. Um, but you'll want to feel that out with a new, you know, a new size gem or, you know, whatever your design calls for. But I'm going to go ahead and pick up 18 because I know that's what fits around here. So let's see, I've got, and there's eight. And there's five. All right, five more. And so this is kind of like a, a you make a ring and it's, it's gonna be wiggly and moving around just for the first couple of stitches. Like so many of our designs with stitching, it's, um, you know, it's gonna be a little bit wonky, but just go with it and try to hold it in place as best you can. But what I've done here is I've just kind of brought it around. I'm gonna go through that first bead. So the first bead I strung. I'm just going through it like that. And I'm holding the sticky gem in my hand as I do it. And so mine came up. This happens a lot with beginners. My loop came up like this. That's no problem. Just go ahead and slide it down. And this is where I like working with a single strand instead of a doubled, because it's a lot harder to do this on a doubled strand for some reason to get it to adjust back down. But I'm just sliding it so that it's pretty snug around my center. I'm gonna hold that up so you guys can see better. And so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go down through the felt. I'm just gonna take my needle and stitch straight down through it from that spot where I'm exiting. So I went through that bead and I'm just going down through the felt. Should tighten things up a little bit more. But we know that that loop is still loose on there. So now we're going to do what's called a tack stitch, where we're going to, and I'll, I'll show you guys a trick for how to figure out how to get the needle to come up in your right spot. But basically what we're going for is every two or three beads, I want to come up in between and then go over the thread that's running through them and come back down. So I use my finger on the back side of the felt to kind of feel where my needle's going. So just based on that, I was able to come up in the spot that is two beads away from the one that I went down from. I'm gonna bring that up. And then just take a quick look at it and see um, it doesn't matter if you come up on the inside of the ring or the outside, just as long as you didn't pierce the thread. And with wildfire, piercing the thread is really hard to do anyway. So chances are you didn't. It's either going to come on one side or the other of it. So in my case, I am coming up from next to my sticky gem, but inside of my ring. So I'm going to go over my thread, staying in between the same beads we came up between, but going over my thread, passing down. And I'm capturing that thread that's running through the center. I'm just tacking them down. And when you do that, it'll pull that ring right into place. So it's now secured in this position. And I'm just going to keep going around. And I'm going to secure it and secure it until I get back to my first one. So let's see, that was right here. So now my goal is to come up right here. So I'm kind of putting my finger there. So I can see where I am. And this time it looks like I came up outside of it. No problem, that's okay. I'll just go down in between the ring and the gem. And so that's locked into place there. That was this one, so let's count three more. And again, I'm just kind of using my finger behind the behind the felt to feel around 
And it just takes practice. If it's frustrating at first, one thing you can do is put the needle down from the top just to get an idea of what that spot looks like on the back and then try to try to hit that point. But really, um, I do find it's easier to just kind of feel it. And it, for some reason, just comes naturally after a few stitches. You just kind of, you reach a flow where you kind of notice, well, I can feel my fingers here under the gem. And I can see that it's going to be right about there for my needle. All right. And just, I'm in between the, the ring and the gem. So I'm coming down from the outside here. And there we go. And so um, I'm going to do that a few more times. And while I'm doing that, I was going to explain a little bit about why kind of unconventionally I'm using wildfire for, for the embroidery, because I know that's a little unusual. But you know how like in, in pretty much any strong design, if you're using the thickest thread you can through a bead, you get it, you get a uh, kind of, they'll lay more in a line, you know, like they'll stay kind of perfectly. That's the reason I did that for, for this thread. It's a pretty thick thread. And it's, it's forgiving in, in that I don't get a lot of wobble where one bead is a little higher than the other. Hope that makes sense, but I'm happy to answer questions about that. So that was my, my last one. I'm about three, three beads away from where I started. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come up through, and you know, it doesn't have to be the exact one, but I'm kind of remembering which bead it was that I crossed through on the first pass and just coming up through that, right underneath that bead at the moment. And now I'm gonna go through, go through that bead again. And that's just, if you wanted to pay attention to where the exits and, and starting points are. But you could also just come up, you know, through where you were and start the next ring there. I'm just trying to stay at the top for, um, mainly for my next step, because I'm gonna go from the spot to make my eye go in this direction. So that's why I did that. Just kind of getting where I need to be. So now that I'm there, I'm in, once again, I'm gonna go down through the felt. And now I'm gonna come up above my ring. So we just made this really, really pretty ring here. I'm gonna come up above it. And now I need 28 beads to go around this part. And so that'll just take me a minute to load those. Let's see, got eight on there. I always lose count, but, but it actually, if I get around and I need more, I'll just add more. Okay, I think I'm about 10 away. Let's see how it looks. This is also good if you don't know your counts. A good way to get your counts is to just kind of just test it as you go. There's five. And five. I think this will probably be right. Going around. And that looks like that's going to work for me. So I'm going to go through my first bead. And again, it's kind of loose, but I'm just going to tighten it up. And see if you guys can see a little better here. Same thing as before, just going to go ahead and go down through the felt now. Find my needle, it's hiding. <laughs> and if you have like, um, you know, one of those magnifiers, this is a really good opportunity for something like that to shine. Because this is tiny and it's easier to see which beads you're coming up through if you've got one of those. I do use one of those um, occasionally when I'm working 
with the little tiny beads. So again, I'm skipping three. I'm coming up and going back down over my center strand there. So that's just tacking down. I do it again, skip three. And then just come back down. And so you can see from the side what happens with that, that loose like um, ring there. You can see it just, just locks it down. And there's one more. I think I only skipped two there, sorry. And skipping, I think I skipped four in that case, but I'm gonna go with it. You see it's locking it down. It's gonna go a little bit faster, but um, I find that it's actually a little bit easier to do um, faster for me than if I focus on a little too much you'll find that too, you'll get really fast and really good at it in a surprising amount of time. Hey, Danielle, it's Carmi. Hey. Would you mind showing everyone the back of your piece? Oh, sure, yeah. Thank and so you. here's my tail. And while we're here, why don't I go ahead and trim that a little bit because it's gonna start getting in the way. But the good news is, is it's getting caught by two strands here. So just a little extra security. And I'm almost to the other side. Just got a few more to go. And so see what I'm doing here with my fingers. I kind of know where, where I am in space based on that. I don't know how, how to explain it very well. Apologies for that, but it's just one of those things that you just kind of feel as you're going. And here we go. So there's our, our eye. And I'm located right here. Now what you could do is if, if you wanted to, you could go ahead and come back up maybe a few over. And then just go through the beads here to bring yourself to the top. Or you could even just lock it down here and see where I'm at. I think I'll go through and then lock it down over here. There we go. Okay, so once again, I'm just going to go right back down through the felt. And I'm just kind of at the center above my eye. And now I want to come up. But before, actually, before I come up, I'm going to do my sketch. Okay, and so um, where we're going with this is creating an outline of an eye in gold that touches the top and the bottom of our ring. And I wanted to also show you on my other sample that you don't have to make it a point. Making it a point is, is no problem. It's an easy way, it's an easy stitch in the method I'm gonna show you. So don't sweat that there's a point there. Um, but you can do a round version if you want to. So sky's the limit, whatever you like, whatever looks good to your eye. Okay, and so I've got a fabric pen here, but again, a pencil, a Sharpie, or even, you could even just eyeball it if you want to. <laughs> All right, sorry, I promise no more, no more eye puns. So um, what I'm showing here is kind of a trick that I use to get my measurement right. And going back to one of my earlier samples, I measured point to point out from the sides because I know I'm gonna go from here to here and here to here. And so this part can be a little stressful. So I wanna show a little trick for how to get it to be somewhat uniform. And it looks like I may have done a little more than half an inch on this one, but you can do half an inch to, yeah, it looks like I did a little less here and a little more here, and that's that's totally fine. It's freestyle, but I'm gonna go ahead and start making points. And that will help us figure out 
how to draw it. It's going to be really gentle. This is a pretty bright pen, but I wanted you guys to be able to see it. And so I'll just make a little dot there. And a little dot over here. Okay. And now I'm just going to bravely draw just a little curve. And so just thinking about, you know, being able to just draw something and then stitch beads over it. You can do anything. You could do like a little design of your choice. Um, and you can even use stencils. A really cool idea that um, I actually had when I was playing with my kids earlier, they have these little stencils for all kinds of cool things. They even had like a little plant. And so you could, you could trace it with this pen and then stitch all over it and fill in the gaps like we're gonna do here. So that's just a, something to keep in mind for where you can take this idea. And real quick, I'm gonna clean out my beads because I don't need blue anymore. I'm good there. All right, get those in there. And now I'm gonna bring out the vintage gold, which is that um, kind of like a metallic finish to it. And we are on back on the stitch thing here. We have our thread at the back. So we need to come up from the back to the front in a spot that's right above the eye there. You don't have to start here either. So if you found that you know you were starting at somewhere else, that's totally fine. And so this is um, um, for so for starters, there's a lot of really great tutorials out there for how to do. Um, all kinds of tracing a line with stitching. Um, this is one of many ways. It just happens to be the one that I think has the most precision because you don't have to, um, you know, kind of guess how many you need. For example, if we try to do, it's possible to do this tacking method that we did here by just laying it out. But for some reason, it would, when, it, when you don't get the chance to lock them together in a ring like we did here, I can end up with one too many or one too few. And even though you could, you technically could pull it off, you would you would want to be working with more than one strand in order to do that. Because once you start going down and then tacking, if you found that it didn't work, you'd have to pull the whole thing out. So this way you get to feel as you go how many you need and you don't have to make any guesses. So that's why I like it and uh, why I thought we would uh, I would introduce it. But so I've got three beads. These are three size 10 beads. And I'm just going to lay them down here as close as I can to where it's exiting. And then stitch down on my line through the felt here. And so they're going to lay just in a row. And they're, they're, pretty, they're pretty sturdy right now, but I'm going to come up two back. And that's why this is called the, the two back stitch method. So I added three on that first pass. And I'm going to come up between these two. So between my first and second bead. And now this time, I'm not tacking. I'm going to go through the last two beads that I added. So just go through these two beads. And you get a really pretty line. It's a really clean line. So next, you just want to pick up two more. Bring that down, just kind of lay them next to each other. Go down through the felt. And now come up three back. So I added two and I went back three. And now I'm gonna go through all three of those beads. So you add two and you go back and you add two and you go back three. And I have seen versions of this stitch done with other counts. And they look great too. So I would say try, try them. Um, if you have an idea, go ahead and try it. Always, um, that's how discoveries are made, right? But I've gone back three and I'm just coming up in between them. 
and I'm going to stitch forward through them. It's a little tight, but got it. I'm going to do that a couple more times, and then I do have a fast forward version I can switch us to. So here's two beads. But I want to show you guys the corner, how to do a turn there. So I added two, wind them up, came down, and then I'm coming back through. I'm trying to come up in between the third bead back and the one before it. And then just going through all three. And there's that. I've got two more before I can show the corner. I'm just going to go a little bit faster. And another thing I noticed is with the felt, it is kind of fibery and it is possible to pick up or nick a little bit as you're coming you know, up from between or when you're adding your next one. So whenever I start my new, you know, my new ad, whenever I add my, my new two, I make sure and pull up on the thread in case there's any of those little kind of like hangers that are, I'll show you what I mean. So from here, I go through these three, right? And when I go through here, occasionally I nick a little bit of the felt, just, you know, the little strandy part of it which would cause my new beads when I add them not to sit right next to my last one. So a trick for that is just take your thread, and just pull back on it to make sure you haven't nicked anything over here. I just did that on my last stitch. That's why I, I wanted to explain why I pulled up on it like that. It's little motor memory things that, you know, that we do. All right, and so now I'm at the corner. So a couple of things you can do, you can keep going like in a rounded shape, which is what I did on the, sample over here. So really, I just kept doing two back, two back, and then you add two, go back three in a circular shape. But if you have what I've got going here, where I want to make a point, let me show you how to do the points really quick. I come up through these last three and tighten this down. All right. Okay, so there's that. Now, normally we would pick up two and keep going, right? But I want to turn, so I'm going to go down through my felt and then come back up. And when I come back up, I know it's hard to see, but I'm actually coming up in front of my last bead. So I'm, I'm headed in this direction in front of that last bead. So here's my needle coming up. See how it's kind of in front of it? It's going to take us in that direction. And so I'm starting a new segment of, you know, um, the two back stitch. So I do need to pick up three because it's just like we're starting a new row, right? So I've got three on the needle here. And again, I'm going to make sure they sit right up next. And so check this out. I've got this gap here. If you end up with something you don't like, because I'm not really loving that gap. Go ahead and pull that off and you will have to remove your needle to get it out, but just come along the back and pull it out. And then just try again. Danielle? Yeah. Just while you're threading that needle, mm -hmm. we do have a few people that can't get their needle threaded. Oh and yeah. Yeah, and you oh. did it so quickly. So while you're doing it, you might as well, if you could just give them a few tips on threading the needle. Yeah, really the only thing that ever works for me reliably is if I take um, a pair of my pliers. What I'm showing here are some square flat nose, but anything will work, chain nose, um, any kind of plier, and just flatten it. Now, if you don't have pliers handy, there's something else you can do. You can take one of our bead tubes and get on one of these flat surfaces, like on your desk or something. Um, put your you know, your, your thread in and then take that tube and just smoosh it and pull. And that'll give you a flat edge too. And that flat edge should go, um, grab a needle over here. That flat edge should go right through a lot easier 
it just really helps. Now, if you're working with like one of the nine rows or a size D thread that is not plasticized and flattenable, so the two that, that this method will work for, wildfire and fire line. Um, if you're working with any other kind of thread, um, get a candle, like a wax candle, or if you have something like thread heaven handy or um, even just like a beeswax bar, go ahead and give it a couple of runs through that bar. And that will also help you get it threaded and help you not get tangles, which is also a bonus. Thank you, Danielle. We appreciate it. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, I know. And um, when I, before the, you know, when I used to get to teach in person, we would allocate 10 minutes of class. We'd go around and just make sure everybody was threaded up. <laughs> I remember those days. So it's hard. It's hard online. I know. But you guys are doing great. So I'm just getting those three. And again, I just came up in front of that last bead. And this time I was really, I tried to be tighter about it because last time I had a gap I didn't like. You can either, you can even kind of come up underneath it a little bit. That'll give you a nice secure, very close connection. Corners are hard, but so there's my corner and it's, it's a little loose. So I'm gonna come up between the first and second beads. And let's go through those last two. And then we're just gonna keep going. Does anyone have, um, if anyone has any questions about that turn, let me know. I'm gonna do one more stitch and then I'm gonna to switch to my fast forward version. Adding two, go down to the fault. And then skip back three. There we go. And then go through those three. And there's a the corner. Another thing you could do is you could, um, you can come back and kind of lock one. When you when you get to the end, when we connect over here, you can go through them all again. And that sometimes acts as a locking point. But what you can do is not go through the last bead and just go through one. And it'll make this one kind of point out. So there's lots of little tricks that you can do to kind of shape that. But um, here, I'll show you guys what happens. You just keep going around. And this one's upside down, or is it not? It looks like um, when I stitched this one, I went that way instead of going this way. So by way of explanation, I'm over here ending. So I, I went from the wrong direction there. But. but for this one, if we kept going, we would actually meet on top of the eye. It looks like what I did is I kind of, oh yeah, that's right. I, I ran out of thread and when I ran out of thread, I came up over there. But that's the cool thing about this, um, with the two back method, you can start and stop anywhere you'd like in your design. So um, on this one, I wanted to show really quick, um, I ran out of thread here and I'm sorry that it's white thread, but I'm gonna get rid of it right now and bring up some um, of a contrasting color. But right now I have, um, run out of thread and I'm not finished with my stitch yet. So I wanna show you how to add thread really quick. It's super easy. And how to tie it off at the back, which is also kind of handy. But so let's finish this row. There's two. And down. Back three. And through those three. And sometimes when you get to your corner, you might not have room for two more. And if you only have room for one, just add one. It looks like in my case, I'm gonna have room for only one. So pulling that one on. I'm gonna come down right about there. And then coming back through, I still went back three, just out of habit. Okay, through there. And now I'm gonna go down. You could also go back through. If you, especially if you were over here, you'd wanna go ahead and join it. So I just stitch back through a bunch of them. So either way, it will both, both of those methods will work. And I'm gonna go down through the felt here. And I need to tie off this um, strand, the short strand. 
So I know it's a little hard to see, but you see how I have all these little little bridges. I'm going to pick up the nearest one. I'm just going to go right underneath that nearest one. And do a half inch knot. So um, get my tail out of there. I drew up a loop, but I didn't close the loop yet because I want to go back through it and pull tight. And you can repeat that one more time if you want to, but remember we're going to glue this so it it's not going to be a big deal if you um if it you know it's not going to come loose. So I'm going to just trim it a little bit closer. Okay. It's stuck. Okay, now I've got this. Oh, look, I've already got this one threaded. <laughs> That's handy. All right, and again, just a comfortable working length. Go ahead and cut your new strand. Here's that knot again. I'm gonna go over and then over one more. Bring it down, pull it tight. I'm gonna trim the edge a little bit. Okay. And so now all you want to do is fill in this area. And so to do that, um, I usually try to come up from a point that's work. Um, and of course, also this, uh, this style is just what I decided looked good. I want to be really clear that you can do any direction you want. But the direction I thought looked cool, and it's, it's white, so it's a little hard to see, but let's get closer, is I kind of went in like a wavy pattern. I have my longest, and so I'm kind of arcing this way. And then from the bottom, I arced up. So it's got this kind of like, almost like infinity symmetry to it. And that was just me getting artsy, not required. You can do any, you know, any direction you want, as long as if, it, if it's consistent, it's gonna look a lot more stunning. So whatever you choose to do, just keeping it the same can sometimes be really appealing on the eye. Um, you know what I'm thinking, I might work with I might work with something different in color so you guys can see it. So I'm gonna fill this one in with just a different color. And it's the same, uh, the same stitch we've been doing. So I pick up three, bring it down, press it as close to that edge as I can get, go down through the felt and then come back trying to get between the first and the second bead there and go through. And then just two more. Fill it in. And then coming up through the last, so you want to go back three. I'm just kind of feeling to get to that spot. There we go. Three, three. I'm going to do one row and then show how I start the next row. And then I'm going to switch to um, show you guys the next steps. I don't want to go over too much. So again, I've picked up two, bring it down. Going back three. Oops, my needle came off. Sorry about that. Okay. So I had just come up three back. And so now I'm just going through those three that I went, uh, those last three. Okay, and so now you, this is where you gotta kind of feel it out. I could get one more bead in there, but it might kind of shift my work around. And I'm always kind of torn about it. Whenever I'm working with these, I, I look and I see, well, is it gonna move my other line? Is it, so play with it and see what you like. If you don't like it, you just pull it out. But I just picked up one bead. I'm gonna go down and see if I can make that look good. And I think I like that. So that's probably where I would stop with that one. And again, I would come back up and go through uh, the last two or three beads. I only added one there. So just going through two in that case, come down. 
And so you want to stitch straight down through the felt. And so now I'm going to just go and come up uh, from below that line and I'm going to start a new line. But I got to kind of find a spot where it's um, what I'm aiming for is like right here. I am aiming to come up right about there and then I'm going to need about five beads. So I'll do three and then two and that's going to look pretty good. So it's that same stitch we've been doing for all of the gold beads. It's the same stitch I'm doing for these pink ones. Just coming down. And that one I did a little tight, but. So we're getting a little close on the time. So um, that is the two back stitch method. And that's how, that's how I would fill in all of this. And then once you've done that, You'll get to you'll get you'll get a sample that looks like this, where it's all filled in. And the first thing you'll want to do is take some fabric scissors and trim around it. And so that is something that is it's pretty easy to do. You just want to make sure you don't nick your threads. So um, I'm pretty close there. You can see where the edging of my thread is, but I didn't cut it. And with my glue. I should cut, um, I'm thinking I'll trim one of these so you guys can see what I mean. And I should still be able to, you know, finish this later. So it's okay to do this now, but you see, I'm just kind of, I'm just going around, right? And I know when I stitch these edges, kind of where my threads were. But you do want to leave a margin. And so that's how I got that one to work. I took and put some glue on the back. So I grabbed some fabric fusion and just did in the center. So one thing that I did is I didn't glue my threads on the very edge because I know I'm going to have to get a needle through that. So I just went kind of like on the inside oval part here and then put it flat onto some of my backing. And you can put like a little book over it if you want to, something just to kind of hold it flat while it's gluing. And that can help out a lot and give it some time. And then you'll have this step ready. Let me get these out of the way. So from here, you're gonna to wanna to trim your backing to match the size of your eye. And it doesn't have any threads in it, so I'm not afraid. I'm just going right up against that edge there. And I've got my stiffened felt as a guide. So this part's really, really super easy. And of course, be careful with your sewing scissors. These are very super sharp. And there's that. But you want to put a really pretty edge on it. Here's how to do that. Get some size eight, or, or you could use size six. Um, I like the look of size eights, but I think they both look great. And I did use white thread because I wanted my thread up here, these stitches here, not to show very much. But I'm going to use this color for now. And actually, let me switch over here to, where's this one? Has my needle on it still? And again, if you're having trouble with um, getting your thread threaded, just getting it flat helps. Or um, for other types of thread, wax. I'm borrowing this one. Okay. So same thing. We're going to do a knot. One of those kind of thicker knots. Get one. And then two. And then tighten that up. And then kind of open the side. And I've noticed that so you can start anywhere on the edge. I think it might actually be easier to start in the center for joining, but then on my sample where it's really close to being finished, I think I actually started on an edge point. It's just fine where I, I hid it for myself, but on my sample where I've, I think I started right here. Uh, it doesn't matter where you start really, but you may have an easier time joining if you start in the center. So just something to think about if you've made a point at, your, at the edge, how to 
it'll just look like that when you go around your point. But here's how I do it. Come up through just the stiffened felt. So I'm still able to peel this back a little bit and get between it. So I'm not going through the brown backing, that, the really pretty like bead backing at the, at the back. I'm not going through that, I'm just going through the white part. And I wanna hide my tail. A couple ways you can do that. Make it a little shorter, but not too short. You can also put a dot of uh, like hypo cement on your knot. If you really wanted to do that, that would uh, make it just extra, extra secure. But I'm just getting my tail to hide in there. See, so you don't see it anymore. And I'm just gonna pick up two size eight seed beads. And I'm gonna go um, to help you get an idea of like where to go down through, measure what that looks like. So it looks like right about there, right? I'm gonna go, go from back to front. So through the brown felt at the back, through both layers. So I came up from the back through both layers. And when you pull tight, those beads are just gonna kind of hang out on the side. Come up through the second bead you added from the bottom. So this is brick stitch. Um, it's kind of the same, what is exactly the same as what we do on our components in a bunch of our previous classes. So if you're, um, if brick stitch is new and coming up from the bottom of the bead and you know, adding an edge like this is something that you want to see again, we do have some other classes on that that we've done where we've brick stitched onto components. It's the same, um, the same process. We're just going through some layers of felt instead of around a component. But yeah, it's the same, the same exact stitch. So you always have two when you start and then one to get you going for the next part. And then you go through both layers again. And as I'm going through them, I'm trying not to come up too far away or too close to this edge. So this edge is, is a really clean, nice, you know, um, line and I don't wanna disturb it. So I try not to come up under it for sure. But of course I wanna get as close to it as I can because I want my border to hug and hide as much of the felt as it can. And so that's what I'm doing there. I'm just gonna come up through the speed. And then you just keep going all the way around. Pick up one. Oop. Go through both layers. And felt at the, um, at the uh, you know, felt section, it's, it's kind of, it's thin and it is possible to pull your thread through it. So you wanna give yourself, you know, just maybe not quite a quarter of an inch, but maybe a little bit of half of that, like an eighth. That way it won't rip. So I'll show you what I mean. So from the back, what it looks like, it's like right about there, right? That's a good spot to come up. And if you don't like it, pull it out in that moment. If you look at it and you're like, mm, I don't like it, then just go ahead and pull it out and start back one bead. You see how it just beautifully ends those and it links them together. So the back, when you go all the way around, it just starts to look like that. And so I'm gonna switch my needle over to this one so I can show you how to connect them. There's so much, we've packed a lot into this hour. I feel like I'm flying through these steps. And I'm having trouble threading that, so here's what I'm gonna do. Just flatten it. And through there. Okay, a few more beads. Going through both layers. And if you're having trouble seeing like where that the bottom of that bead is, just turn it like I just did there. I couldn't really see it very well. And give it one more. And I'm all, I think this is my last one here. Okay, and I'm on a point. I ended and started on a point. So for the challenge of it, I think. So now I wanna join these two beads, the bead I started with and the bead I just ended with. So come down through that first bead, the very first one we did. And I came down in front of it. More ideally, I would have come from behind it, 
but that's no problem. Just go this way, go underneath that thread, bring yourself around the back. And now I can go back through the felt. I stitch through both of those layers again. Now being careful not to come up inside of that, the, you know, the eye ring there. All right, and the cool thing is, is it actually straightens out that first bead when you do that. And then just come up through that bead. Ooh, you made it. <laughs> so yeah, there's the finished edge, how to close that off. And now to weave in your thread. What I like to do um, is I like to just come along and go back through and stitch it. And I always have to remind myself that I want to come from back to front so I can match my stitch on the back and have it not show too much. So I got to flip it. Remember to do that. Um, and then I'll just kind of look at where I did it before. Go through, come up. And I'm going to do, if you do that two more times, I'm going to do it one more time. You'll get to a pretty good weave in. But something else you can do if, um, if you've reached a point where you're like, oh, this is great, but now what do I do with this little piece that I made? Well, one really great idea, because you have this brick stitch edge, is you can stitch a band or you can stitch a bale onto it. And a really cool way to make a bale is just you kind of weave yourself back up to the top or if you started here. So when you're doing your brick stitch, think about what you want to do for your ending. And if you've, if you've got it in your head that you'd like to do a little bale up here, start at this point so that when you're joining, you're right where you need to be. You're connected here. And then you just come up, add a few little seed beads, maybe some like size tens in this color, maybe six of them and make a loop and then reinforce that three times. Go ahead over here and weave in. That's one idea. Another is you can make a band off the side. And that was why I made that round one that I've now hidden from myself somewhere. Here it is. So with this round one, with this rounded edge, I could build one, two, three, four extra brick stitches on here and then start doing herringbone stitch off the side. And you could herringbone stitch one direction and the other, and you'd have a, a little bracelet. You can also glue um, like earring backs to it. You can glue a pin, so many things, put it on a purse or like a handbag. But yeah, that's it in a very sped up nutshell. <laughs> Danielle, that was amazing. I'm actually holding my breath. <sighs> that we I'm sweating. I'm like, I'm not, I'm not gonna make it, I don't know. <laughs> well. Um, you know, for anybody who hasn't taken a class from us, and if you're new, you know, bead embroidery is usually an eight hour workshop on a Saturday. So for us to do it in an hour is really full speed. Um, and you did great, Danielle, a sidebar, oh, and very happy with it. Um, curiosity from somebody just mentioned, do you think a square object might be easier to start with? Or is the oval the easiest? Um, both. Um, I, I, I've done some squares and they just have you use the same trick for your edge as, as this. You just, um, when you come up to, so when you come up with one line, you'd stop, go down, and then start a new line on top of it. Finish that line, go back down, and then start your new line just under it. Great. Yeah. So let's look forward to everyone posting some finished pieces and tagging us. Yes, I'm so excited to see what everyone makes. And um, just really quick, so next week, if, um, you guys are free on the 16th. We're doing some daisy chain. And that is a really cool design. And it's got a lot of potential for um, doing some variation and some um, style, style of your own. And one of the thoughts that I'd had earlier was it also would make a really beautiful chain for your bead embroidery. So we can play with that next week too. If, if I get time, I was gonna try to stitch something up that took one of these finished pieces and did something like that with it. So yeah, that's next week. And um, I know we're over time, but Carmen, did you want me to show the next ones? Sure, if you've got a sure. minute. All right, yeah. Um, exactly. So then, Seven. so July 23rd is our workshop. And now I know this one is really hard to find because it is a, um, it's a two hour workshop. It's under the cutting edge classes. So where you go to michaels.com slash classes and you would normally scroll down and click jewelry. In this case, you would wanna click on the one that says cutting edge classes and it, it has a picture of a cricket 
And this one is, um, it's a paid class. It's $15 to sign up and it's two hours of instruction, smaller class size. And um, we get to go really slow and we'll have a lot more opportunity to interact. So if you're free and you're interested on the 23rd, uh, we'll be doing this Russian spiral. And then on the last class of July, which is the, forgive me, I have it here, um, the 30th. So July 30th, we're going to do the Seaside Bracelet. And this is one of our regular one hour classes, 5 p.m. Central. Really fun. Yeah, and uh, that's that's our, our July. So um, thank you guys so much for being here and for spending your Friday with us uh, doing some fun beating. <laughs> Bye guys. Wishing you guys all a great weekend. <laughs>